thank Walter Beebe and I want to thank Al. And Al, it's all your fault because if you hadn't put me on that documentary years ago, nobody would have known me. Um, but really, my uh, journey begins in 1997. Prior to that, I had married this delightful man. And we were spiritual junkies. You know, I went to every spiritual place in, uh, in, in Tribeca, in Lower Manhattan. And uh, we had just started our organization, which was called American Sufi Muslim Association. We didn't have a home. We just had a teacher and a whole bunch of ragtag team of, uh, you know, spiritualists following him around. And we had a friend. His name was Adamu. He was a jazz guitarist, and he had a wonderful, wonderful uh, apartment, uh, which was in a loft, on Spring Street. Guess where? Right next to the open center. So every Friday night, we'd go up there and do our meditation and do these wonderful things, and we'd come down every time I'd walk by, I'd see the open center. And occasionally, we would go and hear a lecture. And in my mind, I always thought, one day, we should have a bigger open center. We should have a real big space where we can have real big events. And the architect and me and the designer and me want to do something much bigger at a grander scale. So I think that the seed was planted for many different places. So I want to thank you um, uh, for, 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 for having this wonderful space. But you know, the last six months have been a bit of a tsunami and quite an interesting uh, time. And I want to thank each and every one of you and many people out there for their unwavering support throughout the past six months as we weathered this firestorm. And, and I now understand what Goethe meant when he said there is nothing more frightening than active ignorance. And, uh, but we couldn't have emerged through the thick of the fog without the support of hundreds of faith leaders, and some of them are in this room, who understood our pain and fought for our acceptance as they had to fight for theirs many years ago. And recently I met a group of rabbis who said to me, remember the fight that you're fighting is not only for yourself, it's for the next new group that comes into America that will also have to fight for their acceptance. So you have to continue this fight, not only for you, but for other minorities. We could not have survived without the countless conscientious Americans who came to our aid and in the words of this young girl named Alice, whose email I want to read you, she said, I'm so ashamed of those ignorant people protesting, but please remember that they are a minority, and there are thousands of Christians and Jews who love and respect Muslims. I'm 15, and I'm agnostic, but I just want to say that I hope and pray that my generation will be exponentially more tolerant than the ones picketing in New York City. And I know we could not have mustered the courage to face the crisis every day if our mayor and scores of politicians had not reminded all Americans about our constitutional rights of religious freedom and to remember the famous words of Ben Franklin when he said, those who give up essential liberties for temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. And I know we could not have had the desire or the appetite to continue if the 9-11 families had not rallied around us so that we could bring about much needed healing to this nation. And I'll read you an email that I received from a 9-11 member. I would like you to know that some 9-11 victim families support what you're trying to accomplish. My wife died on American Airlines Flight 77 when it hit the Pentagon on 9-11. You honor her and the other victims by being a courageous voice for moderation, freedom, and tolerance. I wish you the best of luck in your plans to build the court of a house in Lower Manhattan. And I know we could not have kept our sense of humor for the entertainers who sarcastically called for reclaiming the deep ethos of American pluralism. We could not have remained active and involved had the civic and interfaith associations not mobilized thousands of supporters to join vigils and rallies. I know we would have fallen into despair had the Muslim community not maintained its unity of purpose. I know for sure we would have felt marginalized had the media professionals not given us the opportunity to tell our side of the story. It's astonishing 
But just from our own research, we have been cited in 600 media outlets. And yesterday's style section, what did they say about me? Because the one thing that I laughed at was that had I lived in the US, I would have probably been at Woodstock. So I'm sure some, at least people don't think I'm an extremist, I, you know, that eases people. But we would have been scared at many given moments had the law enforcement personnel not trained us on adequate safety measures. I know that it's time to elevate the discourse on Islam, as you are already doing through the Open Center, through teachings of Rumi, Hafiz, Ibn Arabi, and all those wonderful luminaries that have created this great civilization of more than 1,400 years. Our tradition teaches us that with every hardship comes ease, as does in every major spiritual tradition. And I'm confident that our community will emerge stronger and even more committed to upholding American values of religious freedom. But on a personal note, I feel blessed to have gone through this, this affliction because I believe deep inside of it is a blessing. And in 1997, I found a prayer that I was so inspired by. I put it on my desk, and I used to read it. And every time I was in a chaotic mood, I would read it, and I would calm down. But they were just words that gave me comfort. And it's only recently that these words have actually had meaning. And I'm going to end with this prayer. And it says, I asked for love, and God gave me people troubled people to help. I asked for favors and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted, but I received everything I needed. I asked for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity and God gave me a brain and a brawn to work. I asked for courage, and God gave me obstacles to overcome. I want to thank all the open-minded people who have embraced us and supported us, and for all the open and centered people and the humans that exist in this room for honoring us, welcoming us, and supporting us in our journey. Thank you very much.